And that's where this is different. So what we're creating is a fibrin barrier. And that's not food. That's fibrin. That's part of that blood clot, that whole clotting sequence. Seven-day post-op. Seven-month post-op. Not great plaque control, but pretty good tissue. And I've seen that, by the way. I, I should say, I've had my laser for nine months. Uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe ten months. Nine or ten months. And one thing I've noticed is, they'll come back with plaque. The tissue's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. Now, I'm not advocating that they keep the plaque, but it's just kind of nice to see. And this is really what it looks like. First radiograph. Looks like an implant to me. Maybe not. So that's after. Interesting. That's a pre-op. Is, is this your radiograph? Is this your personal radiograph? It is not. I'm, that's an, and thank you for asking that. And I want to. Since you asked that, I want to show you, I'm going to show you radiographs. I haven't had the laser long enough to have a slew of, uh, of this. This is a five-year post-op, okay? Let me explain to you that the reason I'm showing you radiographs from others is to make the point that it can be done by others, not just by the guys in California that thought of it. It's universally getting this kind of result. That's why I'm going to show you other radiographs. Now, I do have one set of radiographs that, that I did. In fact, I took one last week that I was very happy with. So I'm going to show you the one. But the, the people, um, th these, these are other clinicians. But it proves that it, it's working for, you know, for other people besides the people that founded it. That's pretty impressive. I don't know why she put the arrow there. To me, <laughs> I was impressed by this. But, uh, you know, she, she was impressed by the, uh, by the distal. This is incredible. Now let, me, now, let me say something about this. These are abnormal results. We're not used to seeing stuff like this. We're really not. I mean, you, you know, people would, you know, cynics would say, well, you know, this can't, this can't be. Um, this can't be the usual outcome. Well, it, it can be, but you have to understand there's a protocol. There's a lot of occlusal equilibration going on here. There's a lot of plaque control going on here. Uh, there's a lot of follow-up, and there's a lot of following directions very specifically. So this isn't an experiment. It's not, it's not like you know, a high school experiment where a patient comes in and we kind of fiddle around. This is what I was talking about. There's a protocol. But that's, a, that's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. That pretreatment uh, certainly would be a referral for an implant in all probability. <coughs> now, now that is really crazy in f for four months. I, I actually thought it was a misprint. Um, even if it's four years, I'll take it. But, you know, again, these are results that we're just not accustomed to seeing. If you could get results half this good, I think you'd take them, right? Look at this. Now, this was, they measured radiographic density over time. So more dense bone had a different, had a different reading. And that's very impressive. Let me, let me say something about this. And I have a couple of cases that I've done in the lower anterior. One of the caveats, one of the rules, you can't have mobile teeth to do the procedure. The teeth have to be splinted. So you can see that those teeth are splinted. So I have a couple of cases just like this. I don't have, you know, it hasn't been long enough for me to show you slides. I'm hoping that, that I have slides that look like this eventually, of course. But the teeth were splinted, and they have to be. So um, that's one of the rules I was talking about. You can't really have mobility for this to work. I, but earlier 
and you had mentioned the clinical uh, trauma. Yes. Uh, and of course, I, I would expect that you would, you know, take them out of trauma, the clinical trauma. But what about putting them into a bike guard? Afterwards, after the treatment, mm -hmm. a lot of patients need bike guards. Okay. And that's important because the regeneration goes on for months and months and you want to get rid of parafunction. So a lot of patients that have this done, they, they need to have night guards. So what, the, what I do is I send them back to the general practitioner and have them make a night guard. I also send the patients back for the splinting. I don't do splinting. So what I do is if the patient gets referred and they have um, mobile areas and I feel it's an area worth treating, I send them back and we talk about splinting. It can be um, some sort of bonding, wire and composite, you know, whatever they want to do. But we can't have mobility. So here's a, a laser, a, a Lynette pre-op. And this is immediate post-op. And you see the tissue is intact. And that's nine days. But you see there's no recession. It just looks like great tissue. It just looks like great tissue. So, you know, that's just something that I don't think you can anticipate with conventional treatment or the treatment that we've been doing all along. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I've been doing the same treatment you've been doing. So here's more. I love this. You're going to love this four months, six months, eight months, pre-treatment to 12 months. Not bad. All different practitioners, maybe all different levels of expertise. I don't know anyone's educational background of the slides I'm showing you, the clinicals, but I know that it's just a random sample of real LANAP radiographs. So that tells me that it can work if the protocol is followed. Yeah. Are these all done with just one treatment? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of hard to believe. But you know, um, these are legit. I want you to know they're not doctored. They're you know they're real. Have you had any conditions in which a patient has been on uh, you know, the Fosamax or the Boniva? And well, that's a that's a whole that's a whole different area. And frankly, you know, it's 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 really not a concern at all. I've done implants on patients that take that. Um, I don't. I don't think there's any issue at all with this procedure and. Um, mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. Here's a pre-op and a 17-day post-op. Some recession. There is recession, but it's healthy and they get to keep an incisor. Incisors are tough. You lose one, you got to lose the other three. <laughs> so that implant bridge comes in. That's pretty good, pre-op, post-op. I like the bone around that. <laughs> 